one of those basement dwelling cyber nodes, as the description said. I'm going to introduce you to the glamorous world of computer hacking. That's not mine. <laughs> also, not mine. There we go. The glamorous world of computer hacking. Now, this is a still from Jurassic Park. A lot of people ask, you know, people that work in the information security sector, the hacking world, what kind of films and TV they like. You know, is it like a sort of swordfish, black hat, and Mr. Robot on the Matrix? And I say, yes, that stuff's good. But it's, it's kind of about hacking in a way. You, you, you go in, you see a thing about hacking, you've seen some hacking, you thought, yeah, I saw that thing I was going to see. Jurassic Park is a film about dinosaurs. <laughs> and it has this amazing subplot of hacking. It's got some of the best hacking in cinema. And that's often, in a nutshell, what hacking's about is unexpected. I'm going to give you now a little visual tour of the world of hacking in a, in a few minutes through uh, the lens of the imagery used in various hacker groups. Let me get this button right this time. This one? That one. Not that one. That one. Now, this is, you're probably familiar with the anonymous group, the, this sort of Guy Fox mask, the we do not forgive, we do not forget. And you might have seen the kind of headless suit with the question mark on it. I'm going to show you now some of the imagery that's used on an anonymous operation uh, specific. So these are some of the images that went up during Operation Tunisia in February 2011. Uh, Revolution 404 Tunisia, that one got printed out, posted everywhere. And kind of the more satirical stuff like get your ass behind a proxy and join the raid. More and more educational stuff, you know, how to install a Tor to hide your IP address. This was a proxy server in Tunisia for Tunisians that were fighting against censorship to use the internet in the outside world, and we would send them care packages on how to deal with them at protests and how to um, uh, deal with things like tear gas, if, if they were, because that was what's happening to them. And then the ridiculous phrase, United is one divided by zero, which I love. Some of these, these are, these are images that replaced government websites. So you go to a government website, Instead of what it usually says, it says stupid things like 404 not found the dictator you're looking for might have been removed, <laughs> which I love. I wasn't responsible for that one. I did this one on the left here. This went up on the Westboro Baptist Church website. Horrible homophobic racist group in the States, and we just replaced all their home pages. It just sort of says, it just sort of says, you can't read that, but it says the, the usual pretentious stuff. We are legion. You have upset the hive mind. And then uh, at the bottom it says delicious cake. Delicious cake referring to their internal network. Uh, database, and we sort of shut down their printer so they couldn't print out more racist gubbins. <laughs> and then you've got the kind of Operation Payback, when Anonymous was associated with the Pirate Bay, and the kind of typical stuff like your government has failed you, the resistance is here with the headless suit, things like that. So these are some of the imagery associated with Anonymous. We've got kind of the ASCII art at the bottom there, because it's all very 90s driven. Even in 2017, we have this kind of old school imagery on purpose, and you know, harking back to the, the days of phone freaking and the big anti-security movement in the 90s in the internet. Now, I started this group, which is utterly ridiculous, and our imagery was purposefully childish in that we thought, okay, so anonymous hacks things, fine, and when people in the mainstream, in the, well, in the mainstream media see that anonymous has hacked something, they think, yeah, that's scary, but it's anonymous. Of course they can do it. They're these big, you know, what if these idiots can do it as well? They use a giant cat in space. This is 2011, and a, a man with a top hat. If they can hack things, we should probably be a little bit concerned. So we would have this stupid imagery, you know, this comic book style, at Looney Tunes. We have this boat called the Lulz Boat, made of ASCII art. Um, someone put together a, a little thing with Tupac there and Julian Assange. <laughs> and we, we, you know, it kind of spread out. People started doing old murals. Someone in America went around graffitiing stuff, and the local news kept reporting on this strange graffiti that had anti-security that just kept showing up. And we had this kind of choir art and these these strange mules. So it was all very, very absurd on purpose to, to, to go against the hacking grain. Because hacking, originally, as I said, was it's kind of about being ridiculous. But then anonymous became kind of normalized and wasn't ridiculous. People just slotted it into their heads as oh, you know, hacking. So we decided to make it even more absurd, which I do regret. We, so this is you know, when we hacked the Sun newspaper um, in protest of uh, Murdoch and the phone hacking scandal, they were hacking people's voicemails. So we thought, well, fine, we'll hack you. Um, <laughs> We, re we replaced, we just put this file on their website for them to see. It's basically a comic explaining how we hacked them. Uh, it just sort of says, we, we sailed into your network, we found you on our radar, uh, the sun.co.uk, uh, the boat comes in, the matrix code happens, that's what hacking looks like. And the, the sun was running a, a server on SunOS, which is an operating system, which I found very ironic. And then it just says a drink to our success at the end. Their tech team found that and were extremely confused. So all of what I just showed you, very illegal, so I don't recommend getting into that kind of hacking. But the kind of hacking I do recommend you get into if you're into hacking is uh, bug bounties. This doesn't look as exciting, but this is a list of companies in the last, literally the last few days, I put this, I put this together just yesterday, um, 
uh, that have paid hackers to secure vulnerabilities. You can sign up to websites now that companies sign up to, hackers sign up to. You as a hacker, you find a vulnerability, you message the company, they fix it, and the site pays you. You don't need to work for anyone. Um, you don't need to sign any contracts. You can just, you can be, within one hour, you can be paid. So Starbucks are pretty good. Here's some statistics. I love numbers. <laughs> Wait, there was a lot of, um, there was a bit of negativity around spreadsheets earlier. I just want to say spreadsheets are amazing. I love spreadsheets. <laughs> so please, no more spreadsheet hate. This would be a spreadsheet if it fit on a slide. So we've got like Starbucks. If you hack Starbucks, they'll pay you $100 minimum. I haven't got any in with Starbucks yet, mainly because they've already paid out over 100,000. And so it's almost like they're, they're fixing so many problems because people want to be paid to hack them, which is an amazing thing. Twitter, I've, I've done Twitter, Facebook, Google, and Apple. Um, Twitter, $140 minimum, $716,000. HackerOne is a bug bounty website. And so even the bug bounty websites themselves that host other companies that want to be paid for being hacked themselves have a program for hacking them. <laughs> and they've also paid out $140,000. You know, Rockstar Games, people behind Grand Theft Auto. Uh, not to make anyone feel awkward, Pornhub, $173,000 paid to hackers, more than Starbucks. <laughs> Very bizarre. Everyone's getting in on it. So look, this is my favorite ever gift that was given to a hacker. <laughs> And that's exactly, yeah. So they got that t-shirt from the Dutch government. And I love the Dutch government now. I mean, I want to hack the Dutch government but the, to get that t-shirt. But the problem is so many people want to hack the Dutch government that they fixed all their problems. So you cannot break into them because they're impenetrable now because of this. And rightly so. So uh, some governments, you know, it, it, so the, the amazing thing about this was a 14-year-old kid that did this. And... You know, he just emailed the cybersecurity team, security at whatever, and uh, he said, I've found some flaws in your website. I can actually gain admin access to pretty much all your stuff. I can see all your emails. And the Dutch government, they, didn't they could have responded by ruining his life. They could have arrested him in a lengthy court process, blah, 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 like seized all his equipment, sent him to prison. But instead they went, fine, that's pretty good. I like that. We're going to send you this amazing T-shirt. And he was thanked on the official Dutch. And he can put that on his CV. You know. <laughs> He does, he, it's in on CV. So he's found 83 vulnerabilities in various government websites. They send him swag like that. And we're work, I'm working with a few schools to try and get stuff like this in schools. Because we all, I mean, I don't know, some of you may have tinkered about with the school network or whatever I did when I was in school. But instead of getting into trouble with it, you should be, the, the school should have a bug bounty program in place where you, uh, you can hack into it and they say, oh, thanks, we'll fix it. And imagine having, like, at the end of the school year, you know, best footballer of the year, best hacking. You get a little trophy for best hacking. And then you can legitimately put on your CV, worked with the school's IT team, hack the network. So I think there's sort of, that's very rapid, but there's, there's three lessons from this. I think lesson one is be absurd, be outlandish, and just be, be creative. It, no one, nothing has ever been hacked or changed by being normal or by thinking about something in a normal way. And I, I do a lot, I've learned a lot about lock picking recently. And I want to get better at lock picking. <laughs> not, not to break locks, but to not break locks. I want to see locks more secure. So like if you go into a supermarket, you can buy any padlock, doesn't matter how much they are, you can get into it in two seconds. I don't, I don't like that. And the doors, like one or two seconds, it's fine. Um, so, so hacking in a, in a way, you can, you, it's the sort of idea of breaking it down, but to make it better. So it's not this bad thing. We need to remove the stigma from it, where it's just like oh, cyber hackers, ones and zeros flying by in their head, all after your money. No one's after you. Hackers hate people that are after your money. We hate the kind of NHS ransomware recently. Real hackers hate that stuff. We all hunted those people down and worked to break in one of them. A friend of mine found this kill switch that stopped the ransomware spreading, etc. Those guys are terrible. Uh, lesson, I think that's a lesson. Lesson two. Um, just be bold, like the Dutch government. Be more like the Dutch government's cybersecurity team. You know, they were bold and unafraid. They could have, you know, got a successful prosecution of some kid, and then, you know, they, you know the U.S. government does it all the time. Um, I mean, the Pentagon have a hack the Pentagon program, fine, but the U.S. government is well known for putting hackers behind bars for 30 years. A good friend of mine, Larry Love, is facing extradition to the States at the moment, and he's an amazing person, can do amazing things. So be bold and creative and think about these things, like the Dutch government's cybersecurity team. And I really want one of those T-shirts, but I'm never going to get one. Um, and finally, just three words, hack the planet, just hack everything, <laughs> fix it all. Don't be afraid to do it. And I'm going to be around as all the speakers for the rest of the day, uh, ask any questions, any cyber nerd questions, just throw them my way. Thank you.